Well, uh, moving on to the Asia Pacific, the market started the trading week with gains despite China reporting that its economy grew at the lowest official pace in 28 years. The world's second largest economy grew 6.6% in 2018, which matched expectations from analysts and was lower than the revised 6.8% growth in 2017. Uh, the Shanghai Composite rose more than 0.5%, while the Shenzhen Composite gained 0.6%. 0.607%. And elsewhere in Asia, Japan's Nikkei 225 gained 0.26%, while the Topics Index rose 0.56%. And in South Korea, the COPSI ended its trading day largely flat. In Wall Street, the markets are closed for the Martin Luther Jr. Day holiday. However, stocks rose on Friday as investors shared potential progress in trade negotiations between China and the United States. The Dow Industrial Average rose 336.25 points. The S&P 500 climbed 1.3%, closing out of correction territory as uh, the materials sectors outperformed. Nasdaq advanced 1% to close at over 7,000. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa recently presented his party's manifesto to the public. He outlined his plans for strengthening the economy and investment and also cleaning up the state and its institutions after almost a decade of looting through state capture. While well, joining us to dissect some of the plans by President Ramaphosa towards driving the economy is an economist and data scientist, Trinity Nkube in Johannesburg. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. All right, Trinity, having listened to President Ramaphosa's peak of his plans towards driving the economy. As a, a data scientist, how promising would you say this is? Uh, well, you know, we, we're entering into election season, so I wasn't at all surprised by the things that are articulated in the, you know, in the manifesto. So uh, there, there are so many positives that come out of what they're saying. Um, I just hope that obviously they will deliver on those promises. So I think almost 10 items uh, stick out from, from that manifesto, uh, you know, starting from job creation, creating sustainable, decent jobs, uh, inclusive growth, you know, having everybody involved in the economy, uh, localization of industry, in which case, you know, government is able to procure almost 30% from small, medium businesses, uh, things such as your innovation and your data revolution, where young, young people are able to be trained uh, in digital skills and whatnot. Uh, then you also have a competition policy, uh, you know, in terms of breaking down monopolies and having more small to medium businesses involved in the economy. Uh, you also have diversifying and transforming the financial sector. So you have financial inclusion uh, and a macroeconomic, you know, framework, which has the National Development Plan uh, in check where you can have uh, more people basically being involved in the economy from the youth to the women, um, and so many, uh, you know, fundamentals that they touched on. So they, they spoke about the right things uh, within the, the manifesto. Okay, um, all right, Trinity. One thing President Ramaphosa has um, talked um, a lot about is job creation. In fact, he says he's going to create at least 275,000 jobs every year. Do you think his government has the willpower to do this? So that is quite um, ambitious. In, in, in a lot of ways, because um, as things stand, we're trying to get out of an economic rut, you know, where you have uh, the growth rate at about 1.3% projected for this year. Uh, and a lot of youth being unable to break into the, you know, to, into the economy and the job market. So, um, you know, throughout the manifesto, there's the, there's the usage of the, the word radical. Uh, I'm, I'm at pains in trying to reconcile the word radical and what's actually on the ground. I would, you know, the ANC government seems to take this paternalistic, you know, stance in which case it says, well, we're going to do this and then, you know, people and then companies and, and the government are going to create jobs. I, I would rather have seen, you know, I would have rather looked at it in this way, that the youth have the capacity and ability to actually create jobs themselves. I think that's the only way out of this mess that we're in, especially with high unemployment, you know, income inequality and just poverty. So, of course, there's some inroads, but if they want to be radical and really go all out, I would say, you know what, why don't we create a, a stable enough environment conducive 
to be able to allow the youth to create jobs for themselves because there's this you know and you know the, the, there's this uh, view that you know the government can create jobs the private sector hasn't been uh, has been unable to create the jobs you know so if they want to create jobs at that fast rate being able to to bring 275,000 jobs per, per annum and whatnot, uh, I think they need to go a step further and have further consultation because at this point, the consultation has been among labor, you, you know, uh, labor parties and, and the tripartite alliance. If you look at the skills profile, if you look at the age of those people, you would find that the youth that are unemployed are so misrepresented. You see, so the consultation, I think, really needs to involve young people. Young people are very creative and dynamic. We speak to them every day. They actually have the solutions. Unfortunately, you have other institutions that are want to make the decisions for them. I don't think it's the right way to go. Okay, um, in um, just a few seconds, what would you say is the right way for the government to go to drive the economy? The digital skills that we talked about, great initiative including your likes of your Microsoft, Google, IBM, have high quality graduates. I am all for that. But include the youth in decision making, include the youth in the economy, actively participating. I think that is the way forward. All right. Thank you very much, Trinity Nkube, an economist, for joining us. Well, uh, we'll take a moment now on the program. And after the break, we'll cross over to the Nigerian equities market for today's market update. Stay with us. <music>